What's up guys, John Carlo Bodona here for another video. Here for today with my friend Ty, okay? He's gonna help me out today. Guys, today I wanna show you guys uh, a couple of options that we can use when we have the head and arm control in the half guard and we start passing to the side control with a knee cut pass, okay? A lot of times when we get into this situation, uh, our training partner is gonna start bridging to avoid staying flat in side control, okay? And when he starts turning into us, depending on the way that he positions himself, he's gonna open himself up to certain attacks, okay? So before we get into the technique, guys, make sure that you, uh, if you like this video and you like my channel, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment with whatever questions or video ideas that you guys wanna see in the comment section below and make sure you share this video with your friends, all right? Uh, so we're gonna start off in half guard, okay? And let's look at this situation, that very, very simple uh, guard pass, gi and no gi works really, really, really well is when I have a head and arm control and I start to cut my knee across, okay? And I get to this position. Now from here, my goal is gonna be to free my leg, boom, come through, side control, and pin him down. And a lot of times in this transition, when I'm just about to establish the pass, that's gonna be the time that he's gonna want to give his last ditch effort to escape, okay? Now, if I do a good job at pinning the shoulders down, this shouldn't be an issue. But a lot of times, as I'm starting to pass, this guy's giving me a big bump, and then we end up in this situation over here where he's kind of halfway turned, and I have him down on a shoulder. Okay, so when we get into this position, as he's turning, guys, notice his position. His hips are slightly off the ground. He just scissored his legs, and he's gonna start to come up. Okay, from here, he can do a variety of things. He could just try to get to his knees and then get away from me, turn and face, he could try to put me back into guard by maybe trapping my leg, pulling me into half guard, getting his legs in however he chooses to, okay? So when I get there, and I was coming through, okay, I have this connection, he's already initiating this bump, okay? Boom. And his arm's coming over the shoulder, okay? So his arm's over my arm here. From this situation, we're gonna change the angle in a second, but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control nice and tight with this arm as a claw grip, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be perfect at first because once we go, go into the back take, it's gonna be a lot stronger. So I just hook as tight as I can right over here and I'm pulling this grip in. My other hand is basing on the mat. Now, what I cannot have, cannot do is stay on my two knees. What I have to do is I have to kind of pressure and turn this corner, almost like I want to go to a head and arm choke and watch as my left, uh, excuse me, my right knee comes off the ground as I turn my hips. So I turn my hips to get away from his legs. It's gonna give me a clear path to his back here, okay? I control his hip with my right hand. I drive off my toes so that I can jump. And I bring my knee as high up as possible. Now my claw is really, really strong. And I can use that to sit him up onto my lap, switch to a seat belt, and then get to his back and be in a strong position where I can start attacking him. Okay, so if we change the angle. As I'm in here with Ty, and I started to cut my knee through, and I have his head over here, okay? He gives one big last ditch effort to bridge and turn that corner, good. So if I stay here, there's gonna be a chance, if I stay here for too long, there's a chance that he might scramble out, and I might lose the back, and I might lose the pass. At most, I'll score an advantage. So what I wanna do from here is I wanna control this as tight as I can. I can base this hand on the floor temporarily as I turn my hips and I'm keeping pressure with my head, okay? Because I wanna keep him on his shoulder for a couple seconds here. Now I based, I, I took a slight back step that's gonna clear this space for me to jump over. I can control the hip. And now when I go, my knee's gonna come as high as possible. Sit, and I roll him through. And then we have the back. Okay, so from that situation, his arm was on top of my arm. So I was here, his arm came over the top in front of my arm. So what happens if, if when I cut through, his arm ends up, he's nice and tight, and his arm ends up here, okay? Now from here, I could take I could go to that same back take, but the problem is I don't have any sort of underhook, which means I don't have a lot of control over him. And if I tried to jump, 
with just his head over here, it's not quite a claw. And then when I jump over, here it's kind of loose and he starts to slip his head out. Maybe puts his back on the floor the other direction. Yeah, and he turns into me. I don't have control over his, I, I need to have at least one of his shoulders, okay? So as opposed to me jumping over, you can just do that. When I jumped over and I had his arm in, you see that I have control of the shoulder, I can stay nice and tight here. And then when I switch to a seat belt, I already have an underhook on this side, okay? Here, I don't have an underhook, okay? And it's unrealistic for me to think that I would be able to finish him from right over here, okay? So instead, what I'm gonna do is when I get there and his arm is inside here, same thing, I'm gonna keep pressure with my chest here because I wanna keep him down on the shoulder. And now my opposite hand is gonna come right in through the armpit and I look to get the blade of my wrist right on his neck. Now I was here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch and be able and push his head down. I wanna get my thumb and my index finger right around the base of his skull right over here, okay, just between the ears. And I push that down as I dig my shoulder in nice and deep. And then from here, all I do is I, once I have his head pushed in, I slide my hand down, we grab our own bicep, and this hand, don't keep it low. Bring it as high as you can. Okay, and now we can finish here just on our knees, using our chest to press forward, pressing his arm into the side of his neck as I squeeze with my other hand. Or if he actually gets up to his knees, now from here, I'll just pull him straight into close guard. And then we get the finish there. So let's move back so we get that camera angle. So, I came in, I got my pass, and then from here he starts to turn, okay? I'm holding him off for a second here, but I need to immediately take this hand, bring it in, switch, turning my hand, palm down, pushing, digging my shoulder, okay? Now once I get here, my, the blade of my wrist, okay? Don't use the flat part. Use the blade, lock the figure four, and bring this hand, so if we just turn. I got here, I'm, I'm heavy on the shoulder. That's very important that I have, I'm applying pressure with my chest right over here. I push down, I get that nice and deep. I slide my hand into place, bring this hand nice and high. This one here, all the way up. Okay, now as I said, I wanna, I wanna push his arm into his neck on this side using my weight. The other side is being cut off by the blade of my wrist, okay? And as I'm here, I can finish one, or if he does actually end up getting up, I like to put him in the close guard, okay? So from here, I keep this, I throw my legs over the top, and we lock the guard. And then from here, same thing, I squeeze, bring my head in nice and tight, and we get the finish, okay? So there's another situation that may happen, which first one, the arm comes over my arm. Second one, it comes under. Third one, I pass. This guy does a good job at keeping his elbow in and getting an underhook, okay? If I try to darse from here, it's a little more difficult, okay? Because his underhook's pretty strong and it's hard for me to get all the way in over here, okay? If he does a good job at using this underhook to really get me forward and get deep, it's gonna be hard for me to to finish the dar side, I just end up with a wizard underhook battle, okay? So instead, as this guy goes, starts to get the underhook, all I'm gonna do is my elbow is gonna come right into the hip to block the hip and my hand immediately stuffs the head down so that I could step over. Now I switch my knees, my right knee's down, my left knee's up. So I'm gonna switch, left knee down, right knee up. As I make this switch, I'm keeping weight on him and I'm bringing my elbow over so that I can back step and then finish in a strong position where I can start attacking the back. I can sit him down and I can start taking his back or going into whatever kind of attacks we want from there, okay? So we just change that angle. The third situation is that as I get this pass, he does a good job at getting this, winning this elbow here where he gets the elbow in and he gets underhook. So as he gets the underhook, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to elbow 
on the hip and I lean on this so that I can step over the head, pushing the head down right away. Okay, I don't wanna let him start coming up to his elbow. So this is an immediate response. One, two, step, now I switch my knees and I switch my elbows. So I replace my right elbow with my left one. Boom, back step and we're on the back. Okay, and then from here, we can go into a variety of things. Okay, so I'll run through all three real quick, just to recap, okay? But again, this is gonna be from situations where gi or no gi, I'm pressuring in with a knee cut style pass and my opponent opts to turn in and face me, gives me a bump and he can give me three different reactions with that arm, over the shoulder, under the arm, or underhook, okay? So we'll go, we'll go ahead in this direction. So as I come through, I came in with a, he turns. One, I claw, pressure, cup the hip, back step, and then right now is the time to go. As he's turning, don't let him get to a full turtle, okay? As he's turning, I commit, pushing off the ground, and then I come all the way through, and I get to my seatbelt. The second option, we have our darts, where as I come through, his arm ends up here. So I keep chest pressure. I bring my hand deep and I switch this hand so I can push, okay? Dig that shoulder, push the head in, blade of the wrist, then we just slide, okay? Don't try to get to, don't try to like pass it to the bicep, okay? Don't try to pass your bicep to your hand because his head's gonna move away and then it's gonna be far. Keep this in, slide it nice and tight. And then we're here, we finish either from top or close guard if he comes up. For the third option, he goes into an underhook, immediately our elbow's blocking, we're pushing the head, we're stepping and we're switching our knees, then our elbow, and then we back step all the way through, we get to our seat belt, and then from here we have a variety of options we can use, Kimura's seated, head and arms, we can take the back, whatever we want to do from there. So, guys, those are three options that I like to use a lot, both gi and no gi, so not too much of a difference when uh, our opponent gives us that reaction, whether it's gi or no gi, but three really good options. It's important to make the distinction of what reaction he's giving you. Where's his arms, where's his arm positioned? And that's gonna give you the opening to a different attack every single time. So I hope you like the video guys and uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up and that subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what videos you wanna see next and I'll see you guys next time.